Good afternoon, pre-calculus student. Welcome to my channel. This is Mr. Chen again. And today I would like to talk about uh, exponential functions. So this one, it's uh, chapter 4 from pre-calculus, or regular pre-cal, or pre-cal honors. But some of the stuff might be a little bit more rigorous compared to what the textbook is showing and what the teacher, you know, you guys have talking about in pre-cal. So check it out. So the first part is about making a graph with exponential functions. As what we mentioned about that in Algebra 2 trick honors. So for exponential functions, normally we do have a general form. So that general form, it's written as y equals a times the base b to the power of x minus h plus k. So where a is a scalar or the scale factor, h is the horizontal phase shift, k is the vertical translation, and b is just the base. So it just refresh back to what we did in Algebra 2, trig honors, or regular Algebra 2. Okay, so one thing that you want to compare and contrast right here. So before you do that, so you probably want to rewrite this one. So this one basically is written as y equals 2 to the power of negative 1 times the quantity of 1 minus x, and then plus 2. So basically this one after you distribute, so this one is written as y equals 2 to the power of negative 1 plus x. So in other words, it's 2 to the power of x minus 1. So basically I just want to rewrite it, so I just want to put it into the basic form. Is this one involved with fractions, and this one is started with the, the constant, with the negative exponent. So I just want to line up with the exact same kind of structure as what we have for the general form. So compare and contrast, so the value of a, which is 1, and the base obviously is 2, and then h, so this one after we simplified it, so h is pretty easy to define, which is just 1, and then the value of k is 2, and keep that in mind that the value of k for the exponential functions, there's another meaning for that, and if you guys do remember what that is, so k, the value of k for the exponential function, it's always standing for the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so that means we started off with the horizontal asymptotes. If y equals 2. And now for those you might be wondering, what about the rest of the points? So we can always set up the xy table, put in some easy number. So normally I would like to choose a negative number, a neutral number, and a positive number. So start it off with negative 1. So negative 1 minus 1, negative 2. So 2 to the power of negative 2, which is 1 fourth, 1 fourth plus 2. And then that would be 2 and 1, 4. So 2 and 1, 4, or 2.25. And then the next one, neutral number, 0. So 0 minus 1, negative 1. So 2 to the power of negative 1, 1 half, plus 2. So 2.5. So 2 and a half, or 2.5. And then plug in 1. So you do have 1 minus 1, 0. So 2 to the power of 0, that's 1. 1 plus 2, which is 3. Okay, so plug in 1 here. And then simply just plot those points. So in negative 1, we do have 2.25, so which is very close to the asymptote here. And then the y-intercept, so 0, 2.25. Okay, so make sure that you label the, the scale. And then at 1, so we do have 3, so it's all the way up here. So this one is just the exponential growth model. So it's quite similar to what we did in Algebra 2, but any time that you see the function that's kind of complicated, or things that looks can be simplified or reduced, or can be written from the other way, so always start with doing that first. So simplifying the equation first. And now what about for the next one? The next one is quite similar to this type of problem. And for this one, so we try to simplify the nothing we can do. So what you want to put in here, it's just analysis. So it looks like it's an exponential function, but also for the overall function here, it's considered a rational. Because that we have a variable in the denominator. So for the inner function, we can define it as exponential growth. But for the overall function here, the outer function is considered rational. So going back to the previous chapter, rational functions. So what we need to define here, this one is considered case three. So case three, that means 
the power in the numerator, it's less than the power in the denominator. So basically, the horizontal asymptote, this one will be considered y equals 0. But another thing you need to define here, for the exponential function, the horizontal asymptote would be 1. Okay? So you've got to be very careful. So the value of k right here, so that would be considered 1. So we do have two horizontal asymptotes. Another way you can analyze it is by using um, the end behavior. Okay, so let's say x goes to infinity. So what happens if x goes to infinity? Well, this one is getting bigger and bigger. So 2 to the power of infinity, it's going to be infinity. Infinity minus 1, that's another infinity. But it's 1 over infinity. So y equals 1 over infinity. So that would be considered 0. And that's one of the asymptotes we have. And now, what about if x goes to negative infinity? Well, if x goes to infinity, this number is getting very small. Okay, this number is getting smaller and smaller. Because that 2 to the power of negative infinity, it's almost getting close to 0. So 0 minus 1, then that will be negative 1. Okay, so 1 over negative 1, then that will be negative 1. Uh, by the way, the value of k here, it's negative 1. So then now the horizontal asymptote, it's negative 1. Okay, so y equals 1 over 0 minus 1, so then that would be negative 1. Okay, so 1, it's going to be up here, so negative 1. Okay, so showing that the direction, so it could be this way also. Well, negative 1 is down here, excuse me. Uh, we don't know which way that's being bounded, so we just want to put in two options. So either being bounded like this, or bounded from the right. And then also at 0, similar. So it's either over here, bounded to the right, or bounded to the left. So now here's the things that we need to define. Uh, you know what? Actually, the direction, the end behavior it tells you, so there's no need to put in two arrow. So x goes to infinity, so y goes to 0. Okay, so that means we're keeping this one here. And then... If x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative 1. So again, the end behavior, pretty much it tells you, you know, the directions of the graph. Another thing that you want to define here, it's the, the points. Can we find a y-intercept? Certainly we can find a y-intercept. So plug in 0 for x. So we got 0 minus 1, which is 1 half. Well, 0 minus 1, negative 1. 2 to the power of negative 1, 1 half. 1 half minus 1, negative 1 half, divided from 1, so it's negative 2. So 0, comma, negative 2. Okay, so all the way down here. Okay, so just want to put a dotted line for the horizontal asymptote. And now another thing that you want to put in here, you know, just put in any random points, any random number. Okay, so let's say that x equals 2. So 2 minus 1, 1. So 2 to the first power, that's 2 minus 1. Then that would be 1. 1 over 1, 1. So 2, comma 1. Okay. So again, the graph is going to be going this way. So it's getting closer to the horizontal asymptote. But what about the other direction here? So the other direction is showing that it's getting close to negative 1. So let's find out any negative number. So let's say negative 2. So negative 2 minus 1, then that would be negative 3. So 2 to the power of negative 3, which is what? 1 over 8. 1 8 minus 1, negative 7 over 8. And then take the reciprocal, because that's 1 over negative 7 over 8. So negative 8 over 7. So a negative 2. So we do have negative 1 and 1 7. So somewhere down here. So eventually the graph is going to be going this way. Again, as x is getting bigger and bigger, so y is getting closer and closer to the 0. And then get a direction here. If x is getting smaller and smaller, getting to the negative direction. So that means y is getting closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote at 1. Okay, so it's an interesting graph. So this one, you can always check that on the TI or the decimal. Okay, so make sure that you need to find out the end behavior because that pretty much it shows you 
the asymptote here. Okay, so, <clears throat> so the next problem, excuse me. So the next one is quite similar to what we got here. So try this one. So find out the M behavior and find out the VA if that's possible. But this one, there's no VA, okay? Because the denominator cannot be zero in here. If try to set the denominator equals zero, well, is that possible? Oh, you know what? And other things that VA, right? A lot of people might be wondering, so what that is? So normally we set the denominator equals zero. So two to the power of x minus one minus one equals zero. So two to the power of x minus one equals one. So in order to have the VA, so x got to be one. Okay, so I have one here. So then that'd be a VA because that denominator cannot be zero. So this position is is actually going this way. So another thing you need to watch out, the VA, okay? So it looks like the graph is going to be going this direction. It's kind of like increasing. And yet the graph is like declining. Because that at zero, we can define that point. Okay, so one is going this way. And the other one is declining, going this way. Okay, so the VA, it's very important if that can be defined. It. But for C, it looks like there's no VA because that's going to be an imaginary number. Okay, so that's something you need to watch out. So again, overall picture here, it's a rational functions, but the inner function, it's exponential. Okay, so now here's another thing I would like to talk about. It's the way to approximate the value for this kind of uh, rational expression with the exponential, with the variable as a power. So the overall picture here, it's kind of like exponential function, but the inner function, it's a rational. So now we just want to find out part of the end behavior. What happens if x is getting to infinity? Okay, so if x is getting bigger and bigger, so what happened with this function here? So what we want to do here, we want to put in the function to the calculator, so the TID4. So what we found here, it's y equals 1 plus 1 over x, close parentheses, to the power of x. And now we just want to go to second and table to find out those points. So it started at 1, and we found out that is 2. So what happened if that's x equals 10? getting bigger so it's about 2.5937 and what about x is equals 100 then it's 2.7048 and what happened x is 1000 then that number will be 2.7169 and what happened if that's 10,000 2.7181 okay so for 10,000 what about for 100,000 Getting closer, 2.7183. And that number right there, 2.7183, blah, 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 guess what that number is? That it's going to be the exponential constant, which is the value of E, if you guys do remember that. So the value of E, okay, so this number is getting closer to the value of E. If X is getting bigger and bigger. So basically this one just written in the blank, you know, X equals 1, so 2, X equals 10, then you just want to find out the number right here. So eventually, if x is getting bigger and bigger, so it's getting close to the exact value of e. So the value of e, it's about 2.718, blah, blah, blah. Irrational constant. So now the next one, it's also making a graph for the exponential function. So in each case, find the equation for any asymptote in the y-intercept, okay? And using transformation, again, we're using that the same kind of form, a times b to the power of x minus h plus k. So define the value of a, so that's just 1. The base is e, which is 2.718. So try to round things up. So just say that e is about 2.7. And there's no h, that means 0. k is 0, so that means the horizontal asymptote is 0. 
Another thing that we need to find out the y-intercept, so xy table. So plugging 0 for x, so e to the power of 0, that's 1. So 0, comma 1. And then you want to get more points, so let's say negative 1, so e to the power of negative 1. So we'll just consider 1 over 2.7. So that number is very small, it's like negative point something. Okay, so it's getting close to the 0. And what about if we plug in 1? So e to the power of 1, then that'd be e, 2.7. Okay, so 2.7 somewhere up here. And then basically just connect the dots. Again, this one is just considered the exponential growth model. Another one is quite similar. So basically before you do that, you want to take out something out for the exponent. So e to the power. So for that, two of x, uh, 2 times x plus 2. So this one can be written as 2 times x plus 1. Okay. And then for those you might be wondering, e squared, what can we do with that e squared? So this one, we can just put it this way. So it's like e squared times e to the power of x plus 1. So what I did here, I just applied the properties of exponent. If you recognize that a to the power of m times a to the power of n, so what is that equal to? a to the power of m. Well, actually, it's a power. So this one, let's see, it's a power to another power, so we cannot do it that way. You cannot just simply separate it. It's on the product to sum. It's a power to another power. So what we can do, we can just put it in this way. So e to the power of x plus 1 quantity squared. Okay. So it's power to another power. So normally for this one, we would like to put it just like this way. Because, you know, if you try to put it in like a square form, then that would be a lot more complicated. It's like a quadratic. Okay, so what we can do here, I mean, you can put it either way. You can just leave it like this, the normal way, or you can just factor it out and then put it as a square because that's a power to another power. Okay, so it depends on which way that you like. So now, to find the value of A, so that's just 1. What about the value of H? So the value of H, you want to set that 2x plus 2. The original power, you want to set that equal 0. So that means x equals negative 1. So then that would be the value of h. And then what about the value of k? So obviously that's negative 3. Okay, so negative 3, it's all the way down here. Okay, so y equals negative 3. And then finding the y-intercept. So set x equals 0. So 0, 2 times 0, that's 0, plus 2, 2, e to the power of 2. So 2.7 quantity square minus 3 okay so just find out what that is on a calculator or just simply do it you know by hand 2.7 times 2.7 49 14 18 2 times 7 14 2 times 2 4 plus 1 5 9 12 and so 7.29 Minus 3, so then that would be 4.29. Okay, so for that one there, it's 4.29. So x equals 0. So we got 4.29. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so that's the y-intercept. Another thing that you probably want to find out is some other point here. So try to create a point right in between. So let's say that, well, let's find out the end behavior. Well, what happens if x is getting bigger and bigger? Well, this one eventually is going to be what? It's going to be infinity because this number is getting bigger and bigger as well. Subtracting a constant is going to be, let's do a big number. So it's going to be somewhere up here. So let's find out some other point. So something that's getting close to um, 0. Okay, so we plug in negative 1, and then we do have 0 for the exponent, so e to the 0 power, so then that would be considered 1, 1 minus 3, so it's negative 2. So negative 1, negative 2.
And what about if x is getting smaller and smaller? It's like negative number, but it's getting smaller and smaller. So this, this one eventually is getting close to 0. So 0 minus 3, it's going to be getting close to the horizontal asymptote. So this one somehow just the other exponential growth model. But it's growing pretty fast due to the, the quadratic. Okay, the quadratic for the power. Or the power to another power. Okay, it's the scalar right here, the 2. Okay, so that's just another exponential growth model. Okay, so you can always check down the calculator. So e to the power of 2x plus 2 minus 3. Okay, so check that here. So e, so second e to the power. Okay, put in the power twice. So just put in 2 times. Uh, 2 times x plus 2. Okay, let's start it over again. So e to the power 2x plus 2. Bring down the cursor, minus 3. And then zoom, standard. Check it out. So it's growing pretty fast right here after you pass through zero is that due to the power quadratic okay so now let's see what else that we have for the rest of this this one is solving so basically you want to find out the common base so we can compare and contrast the common base so we can do something like subtractions multiplication or division or addition okay so check this out so y equals 64 can be written as 4 to the power of 3 to the power of x. And then 0.25 can be written as 1 4 to the power of 3x plus 2. And then 1 4 can be written as 4 to the power of negative 1 times the quantity of 3x plus 2. And this one is 4 to the power of 3x. So basically this one is under the same base. So they're both equal to y, so that means we can set them equal to each other. So 4 to the power of 3x, so that equals 4 to the power of negative times quantity of 3x plus 2. So basically the same base got canceled, so what we found here is 3x equals negative 3x minus 2. So that means 6x equals negative 2, so x equals negative 2 over 6, which is negative 1 third. So another one, this one is a compound interest problem. So we do have two different types of compound interest. One is considered compound interest periodically, and that's the one we're doing. So A of T, so that equals P times 1 plus R over N to the power of NT. And you may notice that 1 plus R over N to the power of N, if R is getting bigger and bigger, so this quantity here, it's almost getting close to E. It's like exponent, like the constant, the special value of E, 2.7. Well, so let's find out. So what does that mean? P, so P is called the initial principle. Okay, so P is the initial principle. So showing that how much money that you put into the, to the checking or the saving account. And then one guarantee that it's 100% always. And then R, it's called the interest rate. And then N, it's the number of compound. Well, where did I want to comp compound it? Monthly, daily, hourly, quarterly, annually. And obviously T is the, the time, which is the number of years. Okay, so started with this one. If one investment, okay, if one invests P dollar, so P dollar, at the 10% of compound yearly, yearly, that means annually, so that means N is 1. And how much money does one have after 10 years? The time. 
So this one in general, we put in P times 1 plus interest rate. So 0.1, uh, 0 0.01. Well, let's see. Uh, 0.1, okay, 10%. Well, that's pretty high. Okay, so 0.1 over N over 1. To the power of NT, so 1 times 10. So basically, this one can be simplified into P times 1 plus 0.1 to the power of 10. Okay, so the number like that. And then the next one, just follow with, oh, at 0. Okay, so not start at 1, so at 0. So that means then that's just the initial principle. Because that, whatever the base that is, to the power of 0, then that's just 1. So that's just P. So start up with the initial amount. And then one year, it's just like what we got here. So P times 1 plus 0.1 to the power of 1 times 10. And then two years, so basically the same thing with the base. But it's 2 times 10, then that'd be 20 for the power. So basically this one, is just want to increase that the time. 3 years, 4 years, 5 years, so on and so forth. And then after that, like 10 years, so 1 plus 0.1 to the power, so 10 times 10, which is 100. So again, basically this one explain what that means. So A, the final amount, P, the initial investment or the initial principal, R, it's the interest rate in decimal, and then N is the number of times compound in one year. Again, could be compound yearly, monthly, hourly, daily, you know, things like that. And then T's the time in years. Okay, so check it out this one here. So David has $10,480 at the end of eight years. Okay, so then that'll be the what? The final amount. And how much did he invest to the nearest dollar at the rate of 2.8% compounded monthly? So if that's monthly, and then that'll be what? 12, because that's 12 months per year. 2.8%, so which is considered 0 0.028 for the decimal. Again, $10,480, so that's the final amount. And the time it takes, eight years. So start with that 10,480. Principal, we don't know what that is. That's what we need to find out. So one plus R over N. So interest rate, so 0 0.028 all over 12, and then to the power of 12 times 8. And then the rest of this, so you want to solve for P. So try to do that on the calculator. This one here, it's going to be decimal, and then to the power, it's going to be a very small number. Uh, it's going to be a big number, and then you divide it by 10,480. Then you'll get the initial principle. Okay, so find out the exact value for this whole thing and then divide it from 10,480. Okay. And now let's see what else. So what about if that's compound interest continuously? So that's another formula. So that would be considered Y equals P times E to the power of RT. Okay. So determine the value of each expression as X goes to infinity. Again, so the one that we did earlier, if we see anything that 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x, as x is getting bigger and bigger, so y, it's always getting close to, well, not infinity, but it's getting close to the value of e. Okay, so we did that earlier with the table. So basically, this one is written as 1 plus 1 over x to the power of x to the power of 5. So basically it's just like e to the power of 5. And now what about for this one? This one is quite similar. Okay, so it just separated out. So this one, it's considered, well, if you try to combine this one, it's like x plus 1 over x. But what about this? The inner quantity? It's just like the reciprocals. So if that's the reciprocals, also it's like 1 over so 1 over e to the power of 3. So we'll just consider 1 over e to the power of 3. If x is getting bigger and bigger. 
So here's another compound interest problem, but this one is compounded continuously. So the setup, invest $12,000 uh, $12,500 at 2.6% compound continuously and receive 42000 at the end of T year. So find the time. So final amount, A of T. T, it's unknown. Percentage, 0 0.026. And then initial principal, 12500 So started with that forty-two thousand, the final amount. Okay, Alicia received, and then initial amount. So twelve thousand five hundred dollars times e to the power of point zero two six t. And then to solve for t, so what do you do? Divide forty-two thousand by twelve thousand five hundred. Right. Well, this way you can simplify it. You can do that. And then equals e to the power of 0 0.026t. So once you reduce, and then for both sides here, you want to take the natural law. Again, we'll talk about the natural law in Algebra 2. So natural law, the difference is that the base, it's always e. So natural log of e, it's always 1. So take the natural log on both sides. So eventually, you'll get natural log of 42,000 over 12,500. So that equals 0 0.0216. And then whatever the constant that this one is, then you divide it by 0 0.026. Then you get the time, the number of years. Okay, so that's it. So this one is for 3.1. So, And next one, I'll talk about the one for 3.2, the, log uh, the logarithmic function either the LOG or the natural law. So stay tuned. We'll talk about those in the next section. Okay, so thank you for watching the video today. So I'll see you guys next time.